choosing what to eat before you run and choosing when to eat before you run is something that troubles many runners out there. Hands up if you've had to make that emergency loose stop mid run. Yep, I have been there. Or maybe you've simply run out of energy during a long run. Yes, I have also been there, but I have learned from my mistakes. So today I'm going to bring you some tricks that I've learned to help you know what to eat before you next lace up your trainers and head out the door. Before we get stuck into what to eat before your run, we probably should address when to eat before your run. How long before your run can you or should you eat? Well, I need to start this with a bit of a disclaimer because there is no one answer for all. For me, for example, I can manage a pretty light and very plain snack about 20 minutes before a steady run, whereas Mark says he can manage a fairly weighty snack, in his words, 15 to 20 minutes before heading out the door. But then I know people who need one, sometimes even two hours of time after eating before they go and run. We are all so different and it's something that you don't want to guess, you need to actually work out. And really, there's only one way to find out, that is through trial and error. So as a bit of a rough and ready experiment, next time you've got a steady run, try eating a medium-sized snack, say 90 minutes beforehand, and see how you get on. If your stomach's entirely fine, then next time you do it, take 15 minutes off that, and so have your same snack, say 75 minutes before you're running. You can keep reducing that until you find that fine line where you know that's the window that you can need to digest your food. If you struggle though at 90 minutes, then add on 15 minutes and so on. And Hopefully this way, through experimentation, you will find that perfect window. But it does obviously have an effect of what you eat, but more on that in a moment. And if you are taking on food before your run, it's presumed because you need it for fuel. So you need to allow your body at least enough time to turn that food into fuel. And to start with, your body will start digesting and it needs the blood, so then take that into your muscles and into your bloodstream, take that energy that's been made. But as soon as you start exercising, the blood is restricted to your stomach. So basically digestion goes on pause. So bear this in mind when you're thinking about how long before you want to eat before your run. And then also it is the quantity of food you're eating and the type of food that will affect this too. And that leads us nicely on to what to eat. Fatty foods, protein and fiber aren't as easily absorbed as some foods and therefore can actually cause an uncomfortable stomach when you're running as they're gonna sit heavy in your stomach rather than getting absorbed. But that doesn't mean they need to be avoided altogether, just have them in small quantities or plenty of time before you go for your run. So that leads us with carbohydrates, which can be easily absorbed, but also give you long lasting energy. So let's take a look at a few examples. We've got things like pasta, bread, potatoes, rice, fruit, and even starchy vegetables. And some of those are more simple carbohydrates and some more complex. And it's things like pasta and rice, which it depends if you go for a brown rice or brown pasta, that then comes under a complex carbohydrate. And as a result of that, it means it's going to be longer lasting energy, but does take longer to break down and digest compared to simple carbohydrates, such as white bread or white pasta. And that's got the advantage that your body can take the energy from it much quicker because it's in a more simple form. And taking that to another level of even more simple carbohydrates, you've got things like sports drinks, um, sweets, gels, those kind of things, which are also then great for actually taking on during a run because it's really easy for your body to absorb. However, prior to your run, ideally, you want to have some complex carbohydrates as they will give you that slow release of energy throughout. You just need to make sure you've got enough time beforehand so you can fully digest it. So let's look at some examples. And we start off with a small snack. You could use something like a banana, which is great for carbohydrate and even gives you the added bonus of potassium, for example. And then you've got oats and say you could have that in the form of porridge. But yes, I know oats does have some amount of fiber, but lots of people actually find it quite easy to digest and it will give you that slow release of energy. You can even go for some homemade energy bars of some sort or granola, but just be aware of the fat and protein in the nuts and the fibre in the dried fruit that might need a little bit longer to digest, but they're also great snacks to keep you topped up throughout the day. And 
going for medium sized snacks. You could simply have some toast with nut butter. Most of you probably like peanut butter. I'm definitely an almond butter kind of person, but you could top that off with some banana to give you a little bit more energy or even some jam or jelly, depending on where you're from with that one. And then there's bagels, which are probably a little bit more substantial and a bit more filling. You could top that with some nut butter or cream cheese to give you a little bit of extra protein, or maybe some yogurt with granola, which will tick all those boxes as well. And these are great snacks to have an hour or so before your run or even as a light lunch. And then a larger snack or meal is obviously gonna need much more time for digesting like we alluded to earlier, which for most people is a good few hours beforehand. But it's these meals that you can start to really get those more substantial carbohydrates such as your pastas and your potatoes in, whether that's in a spaghetti bolognese, a pizza or a stir fry, for example. However, there are situations when you do want to consider fueling before your run. And one of those is your early morning run. So before you've had breakfast, your body will have naturally fasted overnight. So your glycogen stores might be slightly depleted. And even if this is a short to run it's still a good idea to have a light snack beforehand but make sure it's something that's really easy to digest because if like us you're probably going to be squeezing it in trying to get that run done before you get to work and then you've got the longer run and that's obviously going to require a lot more energy throughout it so you want to make sure you've had a small or medium-sized snack long enough before so you've digested it but also consider taking some food or some fuel to take on during that run and then you've got the interval style sessions where instead of using a combination of fats and carbohydrates your body's going to move to using more predominantly the glycogen from that carbohydrate as you're working extremely hard and yes the session might be short but you're still going to be burning through that energy so again for this try to factor in a small or medium snack enough time before Finally, if you are one of those people that's prone to digestive issues, it's a good idea to try and avoid spicy foods. Obviously, you want to stay away from alcohol before a session, but also coffee, as well as the foods we touched on earlier, so anything that's got too much protein or really high in fat or fiber. And if you do this, hopefully you'll be able to go for a run without that sudden panic of needing to find a bush. And coffee is one of those topics that actually comes up a lot because yes, it can give you a kick and really give you that boost for your training session, but it can have some other less desired side effects on your stomach if you're not used to it. Eating after your run is just as important as eating before your run. So try to get something in within the 30 minute window after a long or a hard session. You want to try and keep those blood sugar levels nice and stable and start that recovery process. So carbohydrates are needed to top up those depleted glycogen stores. You also want to have some protein as that's gonna help with that repair process for your muscles and the recovery. And not forgetting hydration. It's important to make sure you take on plenty of fluids. And if it's been a really hot session or you've sweated a lot, then you'll want to consider to some electrolytes as well. We haven't addressed the topic of fat adaptation or using fat as fuel in this video because that is a whole nother topic, but you will find that some athletes are better fat adapted than others and therefore won't need as much of their glycogen stores as some. And as a result, some people might need to eat more or different foods before going for a run. It really is a matter of trial and error and working out what style of athlete and what style of fueling works for you. And on that subject, yes, today we've covered a selection of foods that are our suggestions, the things that work for us here at GTN that we find give us enough energy for our runs and also are relatively easy for us to digest but we are all so different so please do let us know how you get on eating before a run what sort of foods you like what works for you or maybe things that you found have not worked for you as well equally we want to hear from you so make sure you leave your comments in the section below and give us a like and follow on all of our social media channels